Hello. Today we are at Ebi Sucho Station. No, not the Ebi Sucho Station, which is part of the Osaka Metro. No, today we are at the terminus station of the Hankai Tramway. It's quite rainy out, so I cannot wait to get into the tram. Sadly, the frequency of the trams is not great outside of peak times, so I will have to wait for almost 10 minutes before the tram arrives. But this does give me time, however, to grab a Coke can from the vending machine nearby, which was only 100 yen. There it is, our tram. As this is the terminus station, and the trams are bi-directional, the tram will change directions by having the driver move from one end of the tram to the other. When boarding, I tap my IC card. This also needs to be tapped when you exit the tram. At Ebi Sucho Station, the tram changes directions. This takes a few minutes. So this tram is actually one of the newer trams that run on this line, as it is a MO701 series, which began production in the 1980s. Yes, in relative terms that is new, as the Hankai Tramway rolling stock includes some of the oldest trams in Japan, and the MO161 is in fact the oldest tram in service in Japan, and first entered service on the system all the way back in 1928. Although for some reason there is an even older tram made in 1924 which previously was in service on the Hankai Tramway but is now part of the Edmonton Radial Railway Society's fleet and has run on the high level bridge line since 1995. And yep, this line is an operational line, although it does only run seasonally. This makes Osaka 247, as dubbed by the Canadians, the oldest Hankai tram in operation. Which is weird because it's all the way on the other side of the world. In Canada. Today we'll be riding from Ebisucho Station in Nipponbashi to Abiko Michi Station in Sumayoshi Ward, which is the transfer point where you can take the tram further south to Hamadera Ekimae, or if you want to take the tram to Tenoji. The interior of the tram has a longitudinal layout and the seats are actually very comfy. If it's particularly busy though, which I don't think happens all that often, there are also ample handholds to steady yourself as the tram does start and stop a lot more than your average train. It's just a shame all these plastic hoops you can hold on to are not down the middle but directly in front of the seat so you kind of have to put your hand over the top of someone to grab it, which is a bit weird. Given that this tram looks quite dated, I was surprised at just how fast the acceleration was when the tram first started. Sadly the window was quite hard to see out of, as the rain had been quite heavy. We still get a great vantage point from the tram as you are on street level, which gives a different perspective of the city compared to when you are seeing it from an elevated train or expressway bus. The longer the tram was moving however, the better the visibility got, so the later footage looks a lot better. Maybe a little better. For large parts of our journey, the tram had its own right away, allowing us to travel very quickly. This is great when I compare it to my experiences I've had on Australian trams, especially in Melbourne and Sydney, where the majority of the time the tram has to deal with general car traffic, and this greatly reduces the speed and efficiency of the trams. Honestly, I have no complaints about the speed of the trams, especially when you take into account the old rolling stock still used on the system. Part of our journey, however, runs in the middle of the road, and there's also a lot of level crossings, which does slow it down a bit. From just before Hagashi Tamade Station, the tram runs on the street. But it was unclear to me whether the cars were supposed to drive on the tracks, as there is a center line on the road. So one side of the road has no tracks, while the other side has trams moving in both directions. Having the two modes mix just leads to some awkward situations, like this. Okay, now you're seeing me reach Abikomichi Station, and now I have to depart the tram. This is fine for me, as this is as far as I was going, 
But if I wanted to continue in the direction of Hamadera Ime, I would need to transfer here at Abiko Michi Station, as the tram, which continues further down the line, begins at Tenoji, not from Ebi Sucho, which is a bit inconvenient if you're coming from the Ebi Sucho direction. But luckily, you don't have to pay extra for the transfer ticket, which is a plus. Overall, the Hankai Tramway definitely is a good experience for a tourist to view Osaka from a different angle, and I definitely want to experience it during the day as well. But when I imagine myself taking this tram as a commuter, the need to transfer would definitely peeve me off, and the frequency is not great in the later evening. If I lived along this corridor in the portions, where I wouldn't have to transfer, I could definitely see myself taking the tram over the metro or bus for the sole reason that the seats on this tram are just so comfortable. I also hope someday the line could be extended just that little bit further into the major hub of Namba. Okay, well to conclude, I 100% recommend taking the Hankai line as a tourist. It really does give you a great perspective of the city and Sakai as well, which is a place I haven't really been to much, but is definitely outside of the normal tourist areas of Osaka and would be a cool place to explore. As a commuter though, however, I feel like its popularity being lower than the metro or other rail lines is indicative of the problems with the system. Anyways, thanks for watching.